Hey there. In this session, we're going to go over collections in Microsoft Purview. We're going to have a quick overview of what they're used for, how to organize collections and data sources, and how to make them efficient. We're also going to touch on things that are affected by collections, such as scope of policies, etc. Let's begin. So, in order for us to manage collections, we click through into, uh, well, in Purview, we open up the data map. Inside of the data map, if we look at sources, we get an overview of what our collection hierarchy um, has got. Now, for instance, if you have a, um, or, or if you, th when you think about collections, you must think about things like collections define where data sources sit. So in other words, what metadata or technical assets, um, uh, you know, sit within an organization. They also, collections also provides access to manage those resources or, or, or uh, objects, uh, as well as uh, being able to view them, view aggregations, uh, manage scope or policies, etc., etc. Right. So that's the the basics about collections. Now, as you can see, collections is a hierarchy or hierarchical structure, right? And what we want to do um, when we define a good collection structure is to define um, something that represents how your businesses, uh, business looks, right? So for instance, if you look here, we have a, a domain-based approach where we have, uh, in this case, a production environment. Underneath there, we have our domains, right? Uh, and under each domain, in this case, we have our data lake structure or our data lake zones, our basic zones, and then our product zone. So what we wish to publish and make available to everyone in the organization. By doing thing or, or creating it this way, we have a simple way of creating a common scan pattern where we can register a data source high up, like an ADLS Gen 2 account, and then set up uh, scans for each domain and each each zone in that domain, right? By doing it this way, we're going to automatically populate the individual zones. Think of it this way: imagine this structure where we have a raw zone uh, as a file system or a container. Underneath that, we have our domain folder. So this could be operations, marketing, whatever it may be, right? Um, and then we have our, our structure. You know, our you know, data set specific structure underneath. Um, so if I create a scan, so let's say we go back here and I've got this ADLS Gen 2 scan, um, connection or, or data set, I create a new scan. Um, I can scope that to any level within the substructure. So I'm going to create a scan for my. Uh, let's say for finance under raw, right? And I call this finance raw zone. Ah, sorry, no spaces. Right, hit continue. And I can then, under the raw zone, so I deselect everything, go under raw, and now I, I don't have the finest domain, but let's say I had the finest domain, I would select that substructure, hit continue, select my pattern rules, continue and finished, or save and run, or schedule. This way, I have uh, the ability to at least scope the data assets in a very nice, clean fashion and how they come down. And let's say I have ingested data. I can then also easily move um, more data I want to be visible in terms of products into the, um, the products collection. And this goes for things like Power BI reports or whatever you may have. But by doing it this way, I can control access to this. 
Now, talking about access, let's quickly go over that too. So each collection is um, responsible for roles assignments. And how this works is that at the top collection, uh, or at the root collection, which is the default one um, that is created with your purview instance. If you look at role assignments, uh, you have a few different role assignments. You know, you have your collection admins, you have your data source administrators, you have your data curators, data readers, data share contributors, insight readers, and policy authors, workflow admins. Right. So let's start from the top. A collection admin is someone that can manage access rights to this collection. They have um, they have the ability to um, also manage um, the, the ownership, uh, or you know, the, the stewards in the collection. When we um, um, when we think of a collection admin, we think of someone that has the ability to manage an entire substructure, and this is true. Even though in sub collections, so let's take this lab collection for instance, under the role assignment, we have the ability to restrict inheritance. Now, that will restrict everything or remove everything that's inherited except for the collection admins. So if we restrict this, you can see that the, 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 the collection admins still remain. Right. This effectively removes uh, visibility from the data assets, but the collection admins have the ability to still go and, uh, uh, you know, add additional roles. For instance, I can grant myself here reader access without a problem. Cool. So. How would how does this um, how does this work then? So if if we think about this production scenario, so you would at a domain level you'll have catalog access to all items, you know, at different scope. So data engineering obviously needs to see the entire chain. Uh, the data stewardship um, would probably need to um, be able to curate also the entire chain. Um, but a business intelligence developer uh, or an analytics engineer um, might only need to see you know, curated model and products or even or, or just model and products. And the reason for that is because maybe the, da the data engineer works with data sets in model and then produces reports that are published or available for the entire organization on the products. Another use case for, how, for collections is the ability to take specific curated items. So let's say I am um, a public sector body that has certain reporting requirements um, uh, you know, through uh, some uh, legislative um, through some form of legislation. So I need to publish uh, population data or those kind of things. What I can do is I can have a public uh, domain. And when I have worked and curated an asset and is available for public consumption, I can then move it into the public consumption um, collection or the, the, the public uh, collection where a web app has access to read or, or, or has a uh, its managed identity um, granted data reader, and in that case, the web app can then, uh, disp you know, through a a, um, a Node.js API integration, make REST calls to retrieve information about uh, assets that are published. And in that sense, being able to serve that data up uh, through a publicly accessible web app that then touches the back end of purview in this published uh, collection. Now, 
what we're gonna if we look at or think about collections right at, at this stage it's quite simple to see that we have you know we should mimic an organizational structure but beware that it it is predominantly for the use of or scoping of data so, data sets or data data sources right and whatever assets are scanned and, and curated the second thing that is important about these is that they um, they also provide a zone uh, or zoning um, of policy rules. So, for instance, if we look at our authoring, so uh, for instance, here's a, a an asset update policy. Um, these are also applied at collection level. Right. So, and you can only have well, policy can only be applied at one collection, but it will, um, it provides so collections provides then the ability to, uh, to scope a policy at a certain level, or sub level. Right. And um, it's it's important to understand that that this can make a huge difference so you might have in certain collections you might have some engineering process that needs to take part such as a rest call for uh, a pipeline to execute or an audit uh, execution so such as a, a, a rest call to um, uh, you know enter um, a you know, self-service data access uh, log for instance um, for further reporting downstream. Another thing that's also interesting about collections is that if you want, sorry, if you want to grant a user access, so for instance, you you might have a business users user that mustn't be able to search through everything, but needs to understand uh, risk and exposure. And uh, the role uh, th there is a. a, a a specific role for that that uh, that can be assigned, and only that role, the insights readers. So you don't give anyone uh, access or, or or user access to the um, to the data readers, right? But you only grant them access to the insight readers, and they would then be able to look at uh, whatever metrics belong. Um, to those specific collections without needing to grant them access to the entire data catalog. Cool. I hope this has been informative and useful, and I hope that you learned something. Have a great day. Bye. One last thing before we go. Uh, collections have some limitations, um, and it's important to understand those. So. Um, if we're mimicking a business structure, for instance, so in this case we have some domains and underneath there we have a few fixed uh, substructures, right? Um, we have, um, th there's limitation of 250 collections per purview workspace. So if you're designing this uh, a collection structure that is to mimic, mimic an organizational structure, be careful with how um, how big the collection can go, uh, because there's no way of expanding uh, the size of uh, or the number of collections or enabling more collections to be added once you hit those thresholds. For more information, I will paste a link in the description uh, for the official documentation. Thank you very much. Bye bye.